Technical Veterinary Learning TVL channel founded and produced by Professor Ahmed Mamdouh El Sharif, Professor of Epidemiology and Infectious Diseases of Animals, the ex head of the Department of Veterinary Medicine, the ex vice dean of Faculty of Veterinary Medicine, Banisweef University. Lungworm in cattle, husk disease. This disease has many local names, including the following. Number one, parasitic bronchitis. Number two, verminous pneumonia. Number three, husk. Number four, hoofs. Lungworm is an infectious disease of all animals, characterized by digestive disturbance and poor growth. Lungworm has a very wide distribution all over the world, especially in temperate and cold areas, and their presence will depending upon the climatic condition and season. This disease causes serial losses between infected animals. Pathogenic risk factor. The nematode Dictocaolus viviparus, the proven lungworm, and large ruminants. The nematode Dictocaolus filaria, the oven lungworm and small ruminants. Dictocaolus viviparus, belonging to family Dictocaolidae and Protostrongylidae. Dictocaolus filaria, belonging to family Dictocaolidae, Protostrongylidae. And this is the shape of adult worm inside tissue of the lung. This is the shape of Tectocaolus viviparus larvae under microscope. This is a picture of Tectocaolus filarii under the microscope with baronphostomum egg. Epidemiological patterns of lung war. Host risk factor. The host risk factor of lung worms are all domesticated ruminants, all family equity, as well as wild ruminants. Geographical distribution of lung worms. Lung worms distributed in all temperate and cold areas throughout the world. All over the world country recorded infestation with lung worms and more distributed in damp regions. Sources of infection in case of lung worms are contaminated food and contaminated water with fecal matter that contain the eggs or the larval stage number one as well as carrier animals mode of transmission lung worms or verminous bronchitis are transmitted through the oral route through contaminated food and water. The prevalence of verminous bronchitis is low in spring and summer, but rise rapidly in autumn and winter. Also, the prevalence of lung worms increase in war, with summers gives rise to heavier burdens in the following autumn and winter. So, the animals or the offspring that will come in the autumn and winter will be infected 
with long word in more percentage. Life cycle of verminous bronchitis. Life cycle of verminous bronchitis is repeated again and again and again in the same animal and it will be self-infected as well as other animals will be infected directly from the pasture where the larvae migrate into pasture and fungi can assist their spread the animal eaten the first stage larvae then the larvae migrate from intestine to the lungs the larvae here is larval second stage and larval third stage which present into the lung and developed into adult worms then the adult lung worms lay eggs in the lungs and produce which literally coughed up and swallowed the type of cough here is moist cough then when goes to the intestine eggs hatched into larvae and the larvae are passed in the manure with the fecal matter then the larva grow in the manure after passing from the large intestine this is repeatedly continuously for several years pathogenesis of verminous bronchitis each lung worm is dependent on its predilection site dictocaulus filaria and dictocaulus viviparus lives in the trachea and the bronchi then aspirated eggs larvae and debris affect a large volume of lung tissue due to its presence volume of damage to the lung is however usually insufficient to cause severe dyspnea heavy mixed protozoal infection impair pulmonary gas exchanges clinical signs due to the latter pathogenesis the first step of clinical signs is acute form where the animal suffering from rise in temperature severe dyspnea, nasal discharge, severely affected animals stand with extended head and neck, cyanosis of different mucous membrane of the body orifices, and rough husky cough are elaborated. The second form of verminous bronchitis is subacute form, where the animal suffering from diarrhea respiratory manifestations, frequent paroxysmal cough. This a picture of a diseased cattle which extend the head and the neck suffering from paroxysmal cough. The red arrows denote to the opening mouth with extended tongue. Another picture of a diseased cattle with verminous bronchitis that open mouth breathing with nasal discharge and saliva drawling. An emaciated deceased cattle due to verminous bronchitis. A picture of a deceased calf extend the head and the neck with paroxysmal cough and mouth breathing with outgoing of its tongue. A diseased cattle extend the head and neck with paroxysmal cough with nasal and mouth discharge. A diseased calf extend the head and neck 
with grunting cough and mouth breathing. Post-mortem lesions in case of verminous bronchitis. During post-mortem examination, the animals suffering from verminous bronchitis are found with large volumes of consolidation in the diaphragmatic loops of their lungs. Lung emphysema. Worms up to 8 cm long were present in the bronchi only in patent phase of the disease. Hemorrhagic bronchitis with fluid filling air passage of the lungs was detected. This is a picture of adult worms in the lung tissue of a deceased calf. A picture of adult worms in the trachea and bronchi of a deceased cattle. A picture demonstrated adult worms inside the lung tissue of a diseased calf. A picture showed adult worms in the bronchioles of a deceased calf with verminous bronchitis. Adult worms present clearly in the lung tissue of a deceased calf. Histopathological changes. A picture of alveolar spaces of lung tissue of a deceased calf showing larval inside of it, the black arrows denoted to it. LRV inside the alveolar spaces of lung tissue of deceased cattle. Black arrows denoted to LRV inside the alveolar spaces of lung tissue of cattle dead due to verminous bronchitis. Laboratory Diagnosis Samples from live animals Number 1. Fecal matter Number 2. Tracheal wash Number 3. Blood serum Number 1. Berman's technique for the fecal matter where we could found the larva inside the fecal matter by Merman's technique 24 days post infestation. Number three, xenophilia well founded three weeks post infestation. Number four, Liza test. And number five, complement fixation test was applied. Larval structure under the microscope where Rounded head is clear, intestinal granules are present, and blunty point tail. A microscopical field showing mixed infection with paramphostomum egg and the larval stage of lung worms. Microscopical picture showing larvae of lung worms under the microscope in the fecal matter of a deceased calf. Larvae of lung worm that appear under the microscopical field. Microscopical field showing mixed infection with larval stage of lung worm and the paramophostomum egg. Larvae of lungworm threads like in a petri dish in the laboratory. Differential diagnosis have to be made from all diseases cause respiratory manifestation either in large ruminant, wild ruminant, and in calves or small ruminants. Treatment of verminous bronchitis. Number 1. Evermectin group injection subcutaneously with a dose of 7 mg per kilogram body weight. Number 2. Levamizole injection subcutaneously 
8 mg per kilogram body weight and take care that high doses of levamisole will cause nervous manifestation. Number three, antihistaminic drugs. Number four, antibiotics group in case of secondary bacterial infection. Number five, bronchodilator. Control of lung worms. Control of Husk disease beginning by vaccination and in early season anthelmintic prophylactic programs using suitable intrarominal policies or multiple doses of vermectins, mild bemycins, keep susceptible animals of potentially dangerous pasture that may prevent adequate antigenic exposure. Number two, Move the susceptible animal to clean pasture. Number three, treatment of diseased animals. We're keeping you on the right track. So please subscribe the channel to reach to the most newest knowledge about the epidemiology and different infectious diseases of different species of animals. See you later.